Native plants are always a hot topic in Tennessee, and I can't think of anywhere that they're a hotter topic than at Reflection Riding Arboretum in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm here with John Evans, who is the nursery and horticulture manager here, and we're gonna talk about some of these fabulous native plants that you all grow and display and promote to the public. Right, yes, well, we've got just a few of our many, many things that we sell here. Right. We cultivate a lot of things. We, we sell them. We also plant them around the property. Uh -huh. This one I'm sure most people are familiar with. If you're a plant enthusiast, you right. know this plant. This is butterfly weed. It's a type of milkweed. It's uh -huh. Asclepius tuberosa. Um, when it's blooming out in a field, you will see a lot of pollinators gathering around butterfly right. weed. Uh, as well as the other milkweeds. There are several species and yeah. we carry those as well. A lot of buzz right now about milkweeds because everybody's concerned about the monarch. That's right, yes. And this is not only uh, in the case of the, the orange butterfly weed, uh, a great pollen and nectar plant, but also uh, the milkweeds serve as the larva plants for That's the monarch. Correct, yes. And we pay uh, a lot of attention to um, fodder for larvae here right. at Reflection Riding, and here are two other examples. This is spice bush. Uh -huh. um, I just clipped this back, but um, this uh, isn't very showy in and of itself, but it's critical to the larva of the spice bush swallowtail. Right. Um, they have to have something in this genus to feed on, mm -hmm. and our local is is uh, Lindera benzoene spice right. bush. Um, we carry that. This is also very interesting. Uh -huh. This is a Dutchman's pipe or pipe vine. Right. Uh, Aristolochia macrophylla is this species. We also carry Aristolochia tomentosa. Mm -hmm. uh, this, the macrophylla, the big leaf, right. is better if you're at a higher elevation with cooler temperatures, okay. wetter conditions. If you're down in the valley where you're baked in the heat, I would go with the tomentosa. Okay. Uh, so they both have uh, their niche. Right. And it is critical to the spice, or not the spice, but the... Um, but the pipe vine swallowtail. The pipe vine swallowtail, yeah. yes. Yeah. What are these little seedlings coming up in this flat? I'm very excited about these. This is Tennessee ironweed, and I collected the seeds last year, kept them in a refrigerator, and I planted them just last week, and they're already coming up like gangbusters. What's interesting about this particular plant, Tennessee ironweed, is that it's endemic to just this area. Okay. There are a few counties in Tennessee, a couple in northwest Georgia, northeast Alabama. That's it. That's its entire world distribution. And wow. as, as far as I know, we're, we'll be the first nursery to carry Tennessee ironweed. And I'm very excited to be able to offer it. Uh, we can help ensure its perpetuation in the wild right. simply by making more of them. Right. Speaking of saving species. That's um, a fun one there. Yeah. That's uh, Franklinia or the Franklin tree. Yeah. It's actually named after Benjamin Franklin. John Bartram named it. It uh -huh. was discovered along the Alatamaha River right. in Georgia. Yeah. They made a botanical trip down there. They collected some. They thought it was wonderful. They brought it back to Philadelphia. They propagated them and they kept them right. in the botanical garden there. They returned some years later and looked for more of them. They were gone. Mm -hmm. They've never been found again in the wild. Right. So the so, only way that you can get this plant is, is through, through cultivation, nursery, yes. through uh, a place like Reflection Riding or through a commercial nursery that is growing and propagating them. But, but the wild species is essentially it's, extinct. It's extinct in the wild, yeah. yes. And that's a perfect example of the role that botanical garden or even you know, home gardeners can play right. is the preservation of species. Yeah. You know, a lot of times gardening and landscaping is guilty of eliminating species. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but we can also Or we become kind of a monoculture. We exactly. plant lots of Nandina and burning bush and you know those kinds of things where we really can be much more diverse and actually help in preservation. Right, yeah. exactly. So moving on, um, we, we mentioned pollinators a bit ago and certainly this is a great pollinator plant to have out in the garden right now. It sure is. That's the, the obligatory purple coneflower. Right. <laughs> um, you can find these in uh, garden shops everywhere. They're a very popular plant. Um, Echinacea purpurea. Mm -hmm. It's not only a great 
pollinator plant, but when the seeds mature, yep. um, like eastern goldfinches, uh -huh. they love, it's like candy to them. Yeah, I know in my them. garden, when those heads mature in the fall, the goldfinches are just yeah, all over Yeah, just trips back and forth yeah. to the plant. Yeah. Now, less common, you won't find this nearly as often in garden shops, is the pale purple coneflower. Uh -huh. It's a different species, right. Echinacea pallida. We like to carry several species. We also have Tennessee coneflower, Echinacea uh -huh. tennesseensis. Oh, another thing I, I would like to mention as an aside, sure. you'll notice the color difference between these two plants. They're both Echinacea purpurea, but because we collect the seed ourselves, right. you see the genetic variation. You're always going to have a little variation. Some right. may be deeper, some may be paler. Right, and that's a good thing, yeah. is to have that genetic variation and to perpetuate that in your garden setting. Mm -hmm. You can buy a cultivar of this and they're all you know, rubber stamp copies of each other. Right. Um, but you don't get the genetic variation that way. So that's sure. why we like the collected seed. Lobelia cardinalis, mm -hmm. cardinal flower. Hummingbirds love this. Right. When it's in full bloom, these are beautiful tubular flowers, brilliant scarlet color. Uh -huh. uh, and hummingbirds are just drawn to them once again of like candy. Yeah. And then bee balm. Bee balm. Mm -hmm. uh, also very popular with the pollinators. Um, bees, obviously but also uh, butterflies and, and, and other pollinators. I know in my garden, this seems to be a favorite of the tiger swallowtail, that beautiful yellow and black striped swallowtail. I always seem to have those on the Monarda uh, and on the summer flocks. This shrub is in bloom right now, but the blooms are just really tiny little flowers. But what happens after this is finished? Well, you get a beautiful clusters of very brilliantly colored purple berries. Right. And it's called beauty berry. Right. American beauty berry. American beauty yeah. berry. This there is, is our Japanese, native. Yeah. But this is our, our native American beauty berry. Interestingly enough, there was a study just published by the University of Alabama. You know, there are a lot of folk remedies for things, uh -huh. uh, and some of them pan out and some of them don't. But right. the University of Alabama just demonstrated that the rem this has been reputed to repel mosquitoes. Oh, really? Right, so um, people have used it traditionally. They've crushed up the leaves, rubbed them on their arms, uh -huh. and it's supposed to keep mosquitoes away. Interesting. Turns out it's true. And that's scientifically proven yeah, it's now. it's been scientifically proven now. Now, I'm gonna have to put Beautyberry back in the garden. All right, we have one more plant sort of peeking over your shoulder here that appears to be a coneflower of some kind. It is a coneflower. This is the giant coneflower. Yeah. This one as is as tall a, as we are. It's as tall as we are, and if it were in the ground and well established, it would be taller than we are. All right. They're they're pretty cool, and of course, um, butterflies love these. They're they're a real attraction for yeah. attraction for them. So the nursery here at Reflection Riding is it just for the purposes of supplying the arboretum, or can people come here and and make purchases for their own garden? Oh, of course, yes. Um, we have traditionally have had two big plant sales every year, uh -huh. the, the spring plant sale and the fall plant right. sale. And those have been real events. I mean, people come together for those sales and it's, 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 a, it's an old tradition. Uh -huh. uh, what we would like to do is uh, start inviting people to come by anytime right. during the growing season, shop around, take a look. We won't, we won't turn you away. We'll, we'll sell you some plants if you like. Excellent. <laughs> and so this really has now then become a place where um, people uh, in and around Chattanooga and beyond. If you're passing through the area or coming to visit course, for the day yeah. and you want to add native plants to your garden, you can find them here. Right. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.